In this video, we'll go over the cross site request forgery attack of the seed labs and we'll be working on task 3, which is the edit profile attack using HTTP POST request. I'll very briefly go over the cross site request forgery strategy and how it works before jumping into the actual workflow. Now, and this is a social media concept as you saw in the lab instructions, but it can work anywhere on any website. We have three components in the slide here. The first thing is the victim's browser. So it's uh, something like Google Chrome or Firefox. And we have a malicious website using this red icon. It's a web server that is hosting the website. And on the right hand side, the blue one is the target website hosted on a server. It can be something like Facebook or Instagram. Now, step one is the victim visits the target website. So, for example, it types www.facebook.com. And, of course, we get the web page back. Uh, we get the website back to our browser. And with that web page, the HTML content, we are getting the cookies of that web page, which is maybe related to Facebook or Instagram. Now, the cookies are going to be saved inside the victim's browser, of course. Next, the victims at a later time visits the malicious website for some reason. And you saw that the web page goes away. What that means is we don't have to keep the web page open in the browser for the attack to work. You can close the tab, close the browser completely fine. As long as the cookies exist in the browser, uh, the attack will work. Now, the victim visits the malicious website. And, of course, the web page goes back to the victim's browser in response to the HTTP request. When the victim clicks on any link within that malicious web page, that's when the attack happens. Because when the victim clicks on one of the links, the cookies related to the target website, which is Facebook or Instagram, those will be added to that request where it is being sent by the malicious web page. So that's why it's a cross-site request forgery because the request is coming from a malicious web page, but to the target website, it will appear that, hey, I got the correct cookies, so I should execute the request. Now that's the main strategy behind it. So let's go and see how to launch the attack. I'm jumping to the seed VM. I have downloaded the lab setup files for our CSRF attack. And once you go inside the uh, lab file, this is what you should see. So let's open the terminal. And I'm using the ARM version of the lab because I'm using a Mac. The process should be the same for any version of Seed VM. So if I type LS, I see these uh, lab files here. So because we'll be using uh, Docker containers, we have to build the containers first. So the command is dc build. Now depending on your internet connection, this process can take a while. Uh, I already did this one, so that's why it was pretty fast, but it can take a while for you to finish. After this is built, we are ready to start the container. That's dc up and the container start. Now you cannot close this tab from your terminal, you have to open a new tab. So let's do that. Once you're in the new tab, we can use the docps command to see which containers are running right now. And we see these are the containers. You might see a different number of containers, but you should at least have the attacker and DLGG. Now, before we start launching the attacks and uh, we go to the web page, we have to make sure that the DNS entries are correctly configured in our host file. You can do that by using sudo gedit etc host. It will open the host file and you have to modify the host file so that you have these entries at the end of your host file. If you have other entries not related to the lab, you should delete those entries. Basically, after these lines from the top, make sure you have the correct DNS entries. So IP address and host name corresponding to the CSRF lab. You should get the IP addresses and the host name from the lab instructions. All right, I have already modified it. So I'm ready to go. Should click save. 
and close it. It's okay, the warning messages are fine. We are ready to start visiting that web page because the containers are running. We should be able to go to that website. A very important component in this attack is an extension we are going to use for our investigation purpose and that's called HTTP header live. The blue icon right here. It might already be installed in Firefox. If you don't have it, simply click on extensions and search for HTTP header live and you should be able to find this here and then add it because i already have it i don't see that add option but you get the idea so add the extension to your browser we'll need that go to our www.seedserver.com and you should see this page right here now before we start the attack i want to show you the steps so this is what we are going to do our attacker is bobby and the victim is alice this is slightly different from the actual lab instructions. Intentionally, I made this so not to give away the entire solution. But if you understand this, you should be able to uh, solve the one in your lab. Bobby wants Alice to post something, you know, compromising. So it could be embarrassing. Uh, so basically post a statement, Alice loves Bobby on Alice's profile without her consent right this is the goal of the attacker bobby now what are the steps step one is we log in as bobby and we will capture an edit profile request why because of course before we launch the attack we need to know how the edit profile request works and this is a http post request so we have to make sure we understand what's going on so let's log in as bobby you should be able to find the username and password for the all the accounts in the lab instructions. Now, once we are logged in as Bobby, let's go to his profile and we will click edit profile and modify his account. Now, if I click edit profile, we see this page. Now, this is the time when you should start your HTTP header live. Keep it open to the side and we want to put something, a text under the about me section. So, let's put test message for investigation we would want everyone to see this we are going to set the privacy to public right because we want the entire world to know that alice loves bobby right so we set this to public and then we click save once you do that of course the about me section now is modified what we want from this uh, extension is to sh see what was the HTTP request that was sent corresponding to that click right edit profile and this is the URL seedserver.com slash action slash profile edit remember this because we will need that uh, when we launch the attack we also have a few other pieces of information the bold faced part you can see the ELGG tokens are being added automatically and the field that we need to update which is description equals test message for investigation whatever we want to put on alice's profile it should come under this field also we need the username which is bobby and here we also need the access level equals two that means two means public also we have other pieces of information here including the guid which is 57 that's a very important piece because 57 is the user ID of the victim. So Bobby is, of course, trying it himself. But when we launch the attack, we want the ID of Alice. Okay, so we are done with the investigation. Let's take our next step. So we need the user ID or GUID of Alice. So I'm going to search for Alice. And we go to Alice's profile. There are a few ways we could find the GUID of a user uh, in real life. And one of the ways we could do that here, right click and say view page source. That will open the HTML page and we would be able to find the ID here. So let's do a quick search. Control F to find in on page GUID. And we see that, yes, there is a match. You can see highlight all. 
GUID is 56 and there's another GUID match which is 57 that's the session the owner is here 57 who is creating that and again the page owner here is 56 now we figured out the user ID for the uh, user we want to attack which is going to be Alice and her ID is 56 because this is the page owner. So Alice's ID is 56. So we know that user ID for Alice is 56. Step 3 is creating a malicious web page. And that particular web page is inside that attacker folder. So you go inside attacker and we'll modify the edit profile.html. This is something that's provided to you with a skeleton code. So open with other application and text editor and these are the field we have to modify the first one is name so of course we are attacking alice so it should be alice and then the brief description value is the text we want to display right so that's gonna be alice loves bobby then we would keep it two because that's public and finally, GUID. We found that it's 56 for Alice. And that's all. Now, one other thing we need to do is we need to put the URL here, which is action, p.action. This should be the URL we captured using our HTTP header live extension uh, from the extension here, right? www.seedserver.com that's all that we need to do in this html file we click save then we close the html file and we are done with step three now step four is send a message to alice containing a link to some malicious web page we will send a message uh, to alice now okay so we go to inbox and compose a message you can say alice here is a website where you can find, make it something you know, uh, fake and interesting. So, but the main thing is we want to include a link to that web page. So this is already given to you as part of the lab instructions. Basically, we are pointing Alice to the URL where we have hosted the edit profile HTML, right? So, and that's www.attacker. So we got it done. Edit profile.html. Okay, so we'll send that message to Alice now. Next, Alice logs into her account and clicks on that URL. Okay, so let's log out. We go to Alice's profile. Log in and make sure that her profile is empty, right? It doesn't say anything at all. Nice. So we go to that message and say, hey, this website, it looks interesting. So we'll go ahead and click it. And see, we got the brief description modified. It says Alice loves Bobby. Now that's the end of the attack. And that verifies that we are able to successfully launch the cross-site request forgery from that malicious web page to seedserver.com. I hope this helps. Thank you. If you have any questions or face any issues, please let me know in the comment section and I'll get back to you as soon as I can.